Nobody knew about that except her, mm -hmm. me, and my uh, chief of police. Mesdames et messieurs, the greatest festival of our contemporary society, the Olympic Games, is about to begin. This is going to be close. Oh! You can do it! You can do it! Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant! But that is an Olympic champion. Ready? Hello and welcome to another episode of Olympic Fever. I am your host, Jill Jarris, and I'm actually flying solo today. Um, Allison and I have had a couple of wonky weeks and it's been difficult for either of us to get together to record a full show. So we're going to have something slightly different this week and we'll play you my interview with Yvonne Dubois, the Director General of the Montreal Olympic Games and Mayor of the Olympic Village for Montreal 1976. But before we get to that interview, some updates on things we've been following. First off, congratulations to Team Olympic Fever member Sarah Gascon and the U.S. women's handball team for beating Team Canada in both matches of their series, and now they've earned the right to go to the Pan Am Games in Lima, Peru next summer. The women won their first game 22-20 to and their second 26-16. to and the U.S. men also won their series, so they are heading down to Peru as well. Congratulations, everyone, and we will be looking forward to watching you at the Pan Am Games next year. Also, Team Olympic Fever member Samantha Achterberg is competing in the Modern Pentathlon World Championships in Mexico City uh, that are being held September 9th through the 13th. The women's individual qualification is on September 10th, and the final is September 12th. And the finals are scheduled to stream live on UIPM TV, and that's at www.uipmtv.org. And we will have a link in our show notes so that you can watch Samantha compete. I am currently in Long Beach, California at the World Olympic Collectors Fair at the Long Beach Convention Center. So hello to all of the new listeners that I've met there. Thank you for tuning into the show. And contributor Ben and I will be wandering the floor on Friday and Saturday. So if you see us, say hi. And for more information on the fair, go to la2018.org. And next week, I will have a ton of stories for you. And for a little glimpse of what we've been up to, follow us on Twitter at Olim Fever. So on to today's interview. Back in June, when Ben and I went up to Montreal, Yvonne Dubois was incredibly kind enough to sit down with me and share the history, development, and philosophy that went into building the Montreal Olympic Village. And to put a few things in context for you first, the village was two giant pyramids, and each pyramid consists of two buildings that are connected by an elevator tower. And this design was chosen over a temporary structure. So the village is diagonally north of the Olympic Park, so it's relatively close for the athletes who competed there. And that's a pretty cool feature of the village itself. In each room, the or each athlete apartment, you would say, they had some customized furniture built. And it, it wasn't much, but they've got some beds with some storage drawers underneath, and there's like a tall cubby locker area and desks with lamps and they actually they also provided ashtrays so it's a totally different time it's all custom made for the games i'm going to try to dig up some photos i have of those furniture arrangements uh, yvonne talks about what happened to them when the games were over yvonne also talks about this place called the international zone and this was actually a catholic school that's across the street from the north tower and they used it as a place for athletes to do press interviews and meet family and part of the reason why they had this was to uh, be an extra security measure because if you remember the Montreal Olympics were the first summer Olympics after the terrorist attack in Munich 1972. So part of its security, part of it's a way to keep the village a place where athletes could be themselves without having some outside pressure and then part of it was a place where they had a lot of activities for the athletes too. They had some discotheques and cinemas and boutiques and some indoor sports areas and music rooms and dancing halls and lecture halls. So they had a ton of activities. And that's one of the things that really impressed me about this Olympic Village setup, that the philosophy behind it was to create like a big party and make sure there were events for athletes to mingle and get to know each other. And that is one of the biggest draws and 
things that make the Olympics a special event is that you can really meet people from around the world and in different sports and really kind of expand your horizons. So Yvonne talks about a bunch of the activities they had planned, but some of the other ones that they did that he doesn't talk about are really kind of cool to me. So they had like a big athlete's birthday celebration. They had a fashion show. They had a cocktail party. And they also had this Esperanto conference, which kills me. And they they do list in the annual report the attendees at these events. And I really would love to find an athlete, one of the 10 athletes who attended the Esperanto conference, because I really want to hear what it was about. So if you know of anybody who did, send them our way, info at olimfever.com. But anyway, the events were actually a really big success. They had over 91,000 attendees at these events total. And they also did a whole bunch of guided tours and they had over 2,400 participants in those. So here's my conversation with Yvonne. And for our interview, I sent him some questions ahead of time. So he prepared some answers for that. And then we had some conversation after that section. So I'm really excited to bring you this bit of history. Thanks so much for listening. Allison and I will be back next week. And in the meantime, Take a listen to my conversation with Yvonne and keep the flame alive. Thanks. It was not my concern at all uh, to uh, be part, you know, of the organization of the games. It was not my concern. I was in that mission, you know, in Munich. I think it was interesting to be there. And I was very, very, very happy to live in the village because the uh, youngsters, you know, I I, I did create the first... uh, private summer camp in 1965 in Quebec, the first private camp called EDFI. To tell you, it it probably did influence, you know, the organizing committee to uh, one day call me uh, to meet them, and I met them, and they asked me to take over two different responsibilities, but they really didn't know what they were talking about, because they didn't know, you know, the the involvement, you know, of these two responsibilities. They asked me to take o- to take the uh, ceremonies and to take over the Olympic Village. Wow, that's two so, big uh, things. So, uh, you know, yeah, but they didn't realize that. Mm-hmm. I mean, most of them, maybe. Anyway, I, I the it's how you know it happened. Mm-hmm. They invite me to take these uh, responsibilities. And uh, after consulting, you know, my family, after consulting some friends and also some uh, colleagues, you know, in my different duties, I did accept to take over the Olympic Village. And I told them I'll, uh, I'll do some work concerning the, the ceremonies to advance, you know, the project. But uh, I'll get somebody, uh, I will recommend you somebody that will be able, you know, to do that better than I do, that I could do. And finally, I get somebody, and uh, after a few months, you know, and they took over. But I, I, I kept the Olympic Village administration, development, all the planning of the, uh, of the Olympic Village. And uh, a certain time, it became the, uh, the, the situation of uh, naming the, the, the mayor of the Olympic Games occur, and uh, I did uh, make some suggestion to have, you know, to take, because being the job of a mayor and the job of the uh, general director is is, is quite different. It's a protocol uh, duty, being mayor and uh, being, you know, director general, it's it's an administration uh, job. And uh, I did suggest, you know, the Kojo uh, to uh, name, you know, uh, different people. I, I think I had very, very good ideas, you know, who they should uh, have named, but they refused and they asked me to take over both responsibility, director general and mayor of, of the village. That's how it happened. Okay. So you got convinced, basically, to take I, this I beg your pardon? You were convinced to take this job? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, well, uh, the, the, uh, you know, uh, I was convinced to take this job because I think it was a, a great opportunity to go back to the real meaning of the games. 
In my mind, the real meanings of the Olympic Games, and it was in the mind of uh, Pierre de Coubertin, it was to take sports, you know, as a motive to get together, you know, young people around the world in, in order, you know, that they know each other, you know, better and that they uh, become friends and it has an influence, you know, of the uh, situation of the world, the peace in the world. That's, it was my objective to, uh, it, it was my objective to take over that job in order that the village will uh, be able, you know, to bring that up and make sure, you know, that uh, it's done properly to uh, have them, you know, meet and uh, have a good, uh, I should say, a good time because uh, it, it was all about. But, of course, you know, there were some obstacles in that. But, I mean, we uh, we did the utmost, you know, to make sure that the, uh, the, the job was done accordingly. So, the... the uh, you ask me, you know, uh, the development of the village and choosing a permanent, uh, permanent structure over a temporary one. Uh, I, uh, I, uh, well, I will explain to you um, what exactly happened. The responsibility of building all the sites, all the sports sites and, and the Olympic village, it was a responsibility of the city of Montreal. The organizing committee, COJO, our duty was to organize the games and take, you know, all the facilities, the sites, you know, prepared by the city of Montreal and use that for the duration of the games. It, it, it's the way, you know, it was supposed to be done. And uh, in 1974, the city of Montreal uh, has declared that the pyramids will be the, uh, the Olympic village okay, so in, they made that in, 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 in June 28th. On June 28th, so you had 19, 1974. So you had about two years to make that. No, I will explain <laughs> to you what happened afterward. Late September, the city of Montreal was not able to uh, come to an agreement with the promoter, Litera Zarulega. Let's call them Zarulega for our meeting. And uh, they, could not, they could not become to an agreement. And at the end of September, the president uh, and general commissioner of the game, Roger Rousseau, uh, got a, a call, you know, from Lord Kilannon, the president of IOC, telling him that uh, we had to come out, you know, with a, an agreement concerning the construction of the Olympic Village because they were worried, they were concerned, and they want, you know, an agreement at the latest in October at the annual mo meeting of IOC in Vienna. So uh, the, uh, the president of the game, Mr. Russo, called me and he told me, uh, how is it going with the city of Montreal? Well, how is it going? Uh, I, 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 have, I have a meeting with the mayor regularly on how we had in mind to develop, you know, the organization of the Olympic Village and uh, everything is, uh, is, is going okay. But I mean, the mayor still working on the agreement with Zarulega. So the president told me, "Could you uh, could you uh, uh, meet the mayor and uh, tell him about the call that I got from uh, Lord Kilannon?" I said, "Yes, I I will." So uh, I call immediately the uh, the secretary of Mayor Drapel that I knew very well, and she told me, just one minute, I'm going to speak to Mr. Drapeau right away. So she spoke to him, and uh, I went in his office, you know, a few minutes later. <laughs> and uh, at that time, uh, it was, you know, uh, in Montreal, it was the, the period of election in Montreal, so the mayor was busy. But he, he gave me all the time that I need, and he told me... Uh, what he was going to tell IOC in Vienna. And uh, it was not, you know, bringing the IOC the agreement, you know, with Zarolega. So uh, what happened, you know, uh, uh, I went back to the president, uh, Mr. Russo, and tell him about the conversation I had with Mr. Drapeau 
and uh, he told me, I think that you we should call a special meeting of the board. And Mr. Drebel was member of the board. I said, it's fine. And he told me, can you prepare, you know, a report, you know, an up-to-date report, you know, on uh, the situation? I said, yes, of course, I'll, I'll be able to prepare that. So uh, I I still have that, uh, <laughs> that, that report. And I uh, we, we did present that to the board. And the board has decided to uh, tell Mr. Drebel uh, to uh, finalize, you know, an agreement with Zerolega. Otherwise, you know, before the end of September, we will have to take over, you know, the uh, the negotiation with Zerolega and finish it. So uh, that's what happened. Okay. Uh, and uh, we, ne- we, we did negotiate day and night with Zerolega for a, a few days, myself and uh, a lawyer, you know, that uh, was was hired by Kojo to uh, meet with Zerolega, myself. And finally, we uh, we got a deal with uh, Zerolega, and it's how we we took over. But it was, uh, it was you know, uh, we're talking about uh, October 1974. And uh, finally, uh, we had uh, the ground uh, break mm-hmm. in, uh, at the end of December. And uh, the construction really started at the beginning of January. And the end of construction, it was over by May 15, 1976. Wow. That building went up very quickly very compared quick. to some of the other... Very, very quick. The official inauguration was uh, in uh, June, but we did occupy the village since uh, the month of May, the, the administration. I mean, all my staff at that time. It was not a big crew. At that, at that moment, you know, we were about 40 people. And it became 5,000, you know, for the games. So the official inauguration was made. I did invite the president of a federation that they call La Fédération, La Fédération des Villes Jubilées Mondiales. It's There's a federation a of twin cities okay. in the world. It's a worldwide organization because I did want the Olympic Village to join that group, you know, of the cities around the world, symbolic, symbolically. And uh, the president of that organization was Leopold Sangar. Leopold Sangar was a, a famous poet and he was the president of Senegal. Uh, he was an African and uh, he came to Montreal to make the official opening, you know, of the village with our Prime Minister, Mayor of Montreal. And so uh, the first country uh, arrived at 001 on July 1st, 1976, and it, it was Italy. Really? Italy was the first. Yeah, because it was, it was managed to be like that by the, the Olympic attaché, you know, mm-hmm. who was... Uh, who became later, you know, a senator. It was, his name was Pietro Rizzuto. Uh, and uh, he was very much involved, very much, very dynamic. He was a great leader and he, and, and he wants his country, you know, to be first, you know, to arrive in the village. So they were at the door, you know, at midnight and we opened the door at 001 and they entered and they were, they were the first country to uh, live in the village. You, you asked me when planning the village what you and your team wanted to do different from previous games and what directives you had from IOC. I lived in the village of Munich and also in the village of Innsbruck. Oh, okay. Because Innsbruck had the winter game, you know, in 1976. And I did consult the mayors of uh, previous games as far as 1964, right? Because my first game, my first around. game in Tokyo, yeah. and also the like the village yeah. concept was not that old. That's right, and uh, I was very much uh, disappointed by the lack of documentation. Oh, really? On planning an Olympic village, it was a lack. Yeah, really? yeah. The Germans did not have planning documents. 
They are, oh. they are nothing at, uh, at, at IOC uh, concerning okay. the planning of a village. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was just uh, uh, general ideas, you know, but not really, you know, how to uh, work. And the, there was no, uh, really, no documentation telling you about the different resources mm-hmm. that are required to uh, welcome, you know, 11,000 people. And so we had to s- start from of, scratch. Or did you make sure yeah. that you had the documentation when you were done? So, so, so during the planning period, we did develop 268 different documents on the planning of the games with the different, the, the different services, mm-hmm. uh, the construction, of course, and, and all the, the, the specific arrangements to, for the uh, the uh, Olympic period, you know, because you need, even if you have, you know, uh, housing facilities, you need, you know, uh, to develop uh, resources uh, in order, you know, to offer 32 different services. And we did, we did develop, you know, uh, a documentation that was translate for uh, the uh, Moscow Games and very, very much for the Seoul Games. And I was consultant for Seoul, f- for Moscow, Seoul, and Los Angeles. Oh, okay. Los Angeles also used it very much. So my concern was to uh, make sure to revive, you know, in, uh, uh, in the planning, uh, to revive, you know, the basic meaning of uh, the Olympic Games. It was my concern, and I did work very hard, you know, on these objectives, and it was shared, you know, by the people around me very much. In order to accomplish, you know, many uh, innovations and to to achieve, you know, these goals, we had, you know, to, uh, to, to make some changes in traditions, and it was not easy. It was not easy because uh, we find out that there there was a lot of, many conservative people, you know, in the Olympic movement mm-hmm. uh, that didn't want to, to have too much change, you know, and too much reform, you know. They didn't, uh, they didn't you know, they were very, very, uh, they were very, very shy about Right, much like didn't you want to mix the men and the women, but you had to have them separated in different yeah. towns, first, so? first, it was necessary to have a unique village unique village, not two villages, not one for the men and one for the women. Okay. It was very much necessary to have that. In 1976, I could not imagine to have the girl, you know, on one side and, uh, and the, 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 the man, you know, on the other side. I could not, I, I, I did not appreciate that in what I have discovered, you know, in Munich and uh, in Innsbruck. And I thought that it was very important to have a residential and international zone, two different zones, in order to make sure that the athletes got the proper rest, you know, when they need it, and the international zone to make sure that most of the services, you know, will be uh, given place and it will be, you know, a meeting place. And it, it's what happened. It's, it's how it happened. The uh, a unique kitchen. Before, you know, they had different kitchen. They had an example. The the French people had their own kitchen. Oh, okay. The Italian people okay. had their own kitchen. The Israel people had their own kitchen. I didn't want that. Because I, I, I found that uh, eating their meal, it was a great opportunity for the, the athletes, you know, to meet mm-hmm. and to talk and to fraternize. I, I thought it was... A great place that and I, I think you know it, it was I, I didn't believe it was a good idea to have different kitchen so we we thought of having a unique kitchen and I thought it was not a good idea to have different menus I thought it was I think I, I thought that we should have uh, promote you know the idea of an international menu and since 1976, it's always an international menu. It's a, it's a international Sorry, menu, mm-hmm. and the the athletes they enjoy it so much. The international menu, 
Of course, you know, uh, I had uh, I had some critics, you know, from the uh, the Jewish Congress right. in Montreal. Right. They didn't want right. that, but uh, I had, you know, the uh, approval of the Israel Olympic Committee. Oh, okay. So uh, it it didn't it didn't really, you know, it didn't really me it didn't really bother me. So uh, we had the international menu. And it was a great success, and it's still now at the Games International Menu. And I think it's a good idea. The formerly, in former Olympic Village, inside, you know, the residence of the different delegations, you have, you know, the administration of the delegation. You had the headquarters of the delegation. And I didn't believe that it was a good idea. I really thought that uh, these headquarters should be, you know, at a very specific place with all the countries involved. In order, you know, that uh, the, 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 uh, the head people of the delegations could meet, could discuss, could, see yeah. to, 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 could, could be the first one to develop, you know, friendship, you know, mm -hmm. among the, the different teams. And... Uh, I did regroup, you know, the, the headquarters all at the same place with different services. It was very hard to sell mm -hmm. because the habit was to be, you know, to have the headquarters, you know, with the residential. And I didn't believe that it was a good idea for the athletes, you know, to have the administration or the delegation at the same, the same place where they, they were relaxing, they were sleeping, you know, and uh, so... Uh, we did, and the games after, you know, they did continue with, with that idea, you know, of uh, regrouping the headquarters of the, delega the, the delegation. The most important thing to achieve our goals was our recreation program. I have a degree in physical education mm -hmm. and in recreation. And uh, I was looking at the activities that uh, were taking place in Munich. It was, I, I really thought, you know, that uh, it was not enough, that we, we should do a lot more than that in order always to achieve our goal. And uh, we had a very important recreation program, very, all kind of activities. I read you know. about those. I beg your pardon? I read about some You read about them? Yeah, that. yeah. I was very curious about who, oh, yeah. the Esperanto lecture. I have some comments, you know, from uh, different athletes about mm -hmm. that, and uh, and uh, I was very happy about that. And I did create a new position. I didn't have the budget to uh, hire, you know, uh, people that could really fulfill that job. But I I thought it was very important. The liaison officer. Okay. Liaison officer was uh, almost aide de camp for the. Uh, the head of the de delegation, what they call the chef de mission. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did recruit in the uh, business community and uh, professional community. I did recruit some people that accept to give three weeks of their time, full time, as liaison officer. And each country had one. Oh, nice. Okay. Each country had one. And for us, we did two things with that. First, to help, you know, the delegation, you know, to get around, you know, and to get, you know, the proper uh, services that were available, you know. There were so many that uh, they had to know about it, you know, and how to uh, contact that. And uh, the, the second reason, I had, on a daily basis, the pulse of the delegation their level of satisfaction mm -hmm. by the oh, right, officer. Right. So I had, you know, I had exactly, you know, what was going on. If, and, and, and if something was reported by the liaison officer to us, we were reacting immediately in order, you know, to correct, you know, if there was something to do. And it dealt very much on the spirit, you know, of the, uh, of the team. Another thing that... Uh, the uh, chef of the delegation, the chief of the delegation, uh, really uh, appreciate was the fact that they were 
the one giving the authority of people from, uh, from, from the press to meet either at the international zone or the residential zone, but mostly at the international zone. And they were the one that were giving the authorization to receive the press people that they were asking, you know, to meet a specific country, you know. And uh, before that, it was the administration of the village that was giving that approval. But I didn't want, you know, to give, you know, that responsibility to the head of the delegation, and that they, they were very, very happy about that, you know, because they were controlling, you know, mm-hmm. the athletes and country. Especially, you know, the uh, the uh, Eastern Europe country. They, oh, right, uh, they, they because... Appreciate yeah. that very much. It, we, um, we have also created what we call the Green Line, a different spot, you know, uh, and a different boutiques that we had. We had green telephone. The athletes, they only had to pick it up, pick it up and dial, you know, the, the code of the country, and they could speak to an interpreter uh, with their language. Oh, wow. So it was like an information line for them? Anything. Anything, anything that the athletes want to have and want to check and want to, to obtain, you know, they, they could do it individually wow. by 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 using that green line. Okay. It was well, it that's was really cool. And it that's was, probably very comforting to somebody who uh, yeah, doesn't yeah. speak the language. Yes, that's right. And uh, we uh, so it was what we call the telephone wire, okay. the telephone wire, the green phone. We also provide you know a, a good tourist program. Because we want the athletes uh, to uh, discover our country, discover mostly our city, and we did organize different tours, mm-hmm. and it was available for everybody. Uh, uh, they only had to make a reservation a day in advance, and they were making, you know, a, a tour of the city or a tour of the region. You know, even you know we had uh, groups going as far as uh, Toronto. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. You were asking me how the, the tragedy uh, in Munich affected us, you know. It did affect us uh, very seriously uh, in regard of uh, what I told you, you know, my experience mm-hmm. at the village, but also concerning security, because we knew that the Olympic Games will not be like it anymore. It has to be changed. And uh, we, uh, we, we, we did act accordingly. Uh, in Montreal, uh, the security was uh, assured by the uh, soldiers, the federal police, RCMP, the provincial police, and the municipal police. And my chef, the police, my, the chief of police was... Uh, uh, was coordinating the work of these people, and they were 1,200. Oh, wow. Okay. But, but, we had no uh, military equipment in the village. Oh, okay. No military. I did experience that in Innsbruck, and I didn't want that. Without, with, I, I, when I live in, 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 in Munich, uh, not in Munich, in Innsbruck, a village, there was all type, you know, uh, of uh, military equipment, you know, in the village. And uh, for me, you know, it did remind me, you know, a battleground, and I didn't want that. And all our soldiers, they had a very beautiful uh, scarf, you know, mm-hmm. in, their, uh, in their neck, mm-hmm. uh, and a very, very uh, uh, special uh, beret, I don't know you say that in English, yeah, yeah, beret. Uh, it was, and they were smiling. They had, you know, they had good spirit, and th- they were part, you know, of creating the proper atmosphere, you know, that mm-hmm. we wanted the village and the proper spirit. So, Munich game changed, you know, the the the, the habit, you know, of, of previous games on account of uh, security. The sheer amount of services and entertainment athletes and access. Uh, I think that uh, I 
did answer that, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, I did answer that. Uh, we put a lot of emphasis, you know, on recreation, tourism, mm-hmm. all kind of... Uh, when I say recreation, I'm, talk- I'm thinking about uh, the sports, library, exhibits we had, visual arts, special events, uh, discotheque. We had mm-hmm. two discotheques. Uh, folks, groups that were coming. We had tourism and shows, different excursions, as I told you before, uh, and sending arts, you know. We we had uh, uh, Oscar uh, Peterson that came uh, on a voluntary basis to make a concert. Oh, nice. It was so great. We had a, what we call pastoral. It was an economic uh, services, you know, discussions you know, about different religions and all that. And it was taking place, uh, and everybody, uh, all the athletes that want to uh, have, you know, uh, to discuss religion, any kind. We had people, you know, that were ready, you know, to speak and to have conversation with them. In only in the recreation programs, we had uh, seventy-eight employees. Okay, wow, That's yeah. a lot of people to yes. make sure that fun happens. Yeah. Of course, you know, you're right, uh, uh, the technology, you know, at that time, we just, we, we had to do it, you know, uh, right. without, we had no computer. <laughs> <laughs> that that's give you the answer, right, you know. Right, right. So, uh, of course, you know, uh, it has changed a lot and uh, for the best, and it's easier, it's easier. Uh, converting the village into an apartment uh, complex, uh, what was involved with, and what happened with the furniture, it was given to a non profit oh, really? organization. Okay, what kind of non profit? Camps. Camps. Okay. Non profit oh, okay. camps. Okay. Mine was, a, uh, was not a non profit camp, it was a private camp. Okay. It was, and we didn't, uh, we didn't have any furniture. Okay. And I didn't want it neither. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, why, why not? No, why? Why not? Because uh, it will have been a scandal. Oh, right, right, right. That makes perfect sense. No, no, I didn't want that. Because, but it was beautiful furniture. The furniture I saw it at the 40th anniversary. It was. Concert. It was. So uh, cool. it, it was. It was. It uh, was. It was designed. Uh, it was designed uh, for, um, especially you know, for the Olympic Village. Mm-hmm by a, a designer called Michel Dallaire. He did a good job, great job. We have a, for the 40th anniversary, we have an exhibit uh, in Montreal and and they put up, you know, a, a room. Yeah, I saw that. You saw that? I was that? here for that. Yeah. That? And then, yeah, that's the first time I saw it was the interesting, furniture yeah? and it was really, it yeah. was really interesting. So that was your uh, your questions. I hope you know that I uh, did answer uh, them yes, correctly. Uh, I don't know if it was um, your expectation, you know. But no, it's it's so interesting to hear how you know because today we have certain ideas of what the Olympics was like and yeah. think they've always been like that. But to hear that you didn't have much knowledge of how to build a, an Olympic village because nobody kept records of how to do that yeah. and just the and in the research I read just the emphasis on having fun and making sure people mingled and when we talk to athletes they say all the time that the Olympics is so special because they get to meet athletes from all over the world and the village is one yeah. way that makes that happen That's right. and it's really That's right. it's really interesting to hear yeah. where this all started. That's right. The ideas of where. So, I have a question because I'm actually staying in the village for a few days. Where? In, in, the, in the village itself. Oh, yes? Yes, somebody has an Airbnb. Is so, that right? Yes, oh, yes, it's fantastic. That's great, eh? Have you been back? Do you I, go oh, back? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. We, we have, we have a, they're doing so many pairs now. Uh, and uh, and the uh, the residents mm-hmm. uh, they have in mind to create you know a permanent exhibit. Oh really? Yeah, with my with my uh, artifacts, with my uh, oh, with my pieces, my collection. I have a okay. private collection. Yeah. Because uh, after the games, the, um, the 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 board gave me all the gifts that I got and and all the uh, the objects and mm-hmm. the documents that I got, you know. 
they gave me that as a token of appreciation uh, and uh, I still have that but uh, I, 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 uh, I will give that you know to these people for their exhibit very cool yeah, yeah I'm, I'm staying in I think it's the more north tower where? the, the tower closer to the Assumption I see, I see the school, you know, beside that, oh, it, yeah, was, yeah. it was used like for like our international zone. Oh yes, I read about that. Okay, During that's the games, the school. we okay. closed. Yeah, we closed the we closed the street there, mm -hmm. La Sanction Street. Yeah, we closed that, and the, the 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 school became you know part of international zone. Okay, and that's nice because then that's yeah oh, very yeah. separate from the village to oh, yeah. make sure that. And on the corner of La Sanction, you know, and mm -hmm. and Sherbrooke. Mm -hmm. That place, it was the La Place des Nations. Okay. It was the it it, it was where we had the official ceremony uh, to welcome you know each individual country. Okay. And raise their flag. Oh, when they showed up, that's what happened. Not they when they showed up. Okay. Maybe a few uh, the few day after, okay. you know, and uh, yes. That's really neat. So they got the. Yeah. Have a little welcome. Oh yes, I've been there. I've been I've been there a few times. Okay. Or, or a few times. Yeah, it's it's fascinating. So, was the that building closer to the school? Was that? It's 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 building? amazing to see. You know, uh, how uh, after forty two years, mm -hmm. uh, it's kept. You know, very very uh, correctly. Yeah. Eh? Hey, the uh, the floor. You know, and uh, I I was amazed. You know, by the way that it was maintained, you know, very well maintained. Yeah, it's it's really, it's a neat building. It's yeah. the services inside are Well, you're in the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's fun. We we kind of wonder who stayed in our room. Yes. But, uh, you know, that's probably a big mystery to find, you know, to we find which, which athletes were in. We, the we room. have that. You we do don't. have that? Oh, yeah, we know that. Could we find out, or is that too hard? Uh, it's it's going to be it's going to take too much time okay, to uh, to go, you know, in my files. But oh, yeah, I'm, yeah. Sure, I'm sure I'm sure that we have that. Someday, someday. When yeah. It's yeah. part of an exhibit. Which, what, which, what's the number of your program? Um, fourteen oh five B. Fourteen oh five B. B. Fourteen oh five B. The person, the person that uh, did locate all the delegations mm -hmm. all the athletes it's the person that met you oh really you. that's a lot of work she has too. been she has been my assistant for 50 years wow that's yeah. a job did, did she have to like she had, and 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 she kept a lot of discretion about that oh right nobody knew which where? country uh, where which country are were going to live nobody oh, knew beforehand that. No. Did she before have, before the opening of the game mm -hmm. be, be, before the opening of the, the village? Mm -hmm. Nobody knew about that except her, mm -hmm. me, and my chief of police. Did she try to keep and and of course the country concerned? Right, right. They yeah, knew yeah, where yeah, they were going the, to stay, yes, but they didn't yes, know who would be around them. Was yes. was there thought into how we we should maybe not put these two countries together or keep the eastern bloc well, together well well I, I had a i had a i had great help from henry kissinger mm -hmm. because i had in mind because it was the cold war between us and you and urss mm -hmm. and uh, i had a, i had a dream to put as neighbor the u the usa team and urss team and Henry Kissinger is the one who encouraged that and told me who to contact in Russia. And it was Ivan Pavlov. And uh, I did submit, you know, the ID of Ivan Pavlov that I met. Mm -hmm. And uh, he thought it was a great ID. He was a very open man. At that time, it was not that easy to find out, you know, a man, you know, with that opening. But Henry Kissinger knew him. Well, and he said he's the one who can do the, who can do it. So and he did it. So we had oh, U wow. USA and US as neighbor. Wow! It was part, you know, of my goal. Right. Yeah. To help. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's fascinating. Great. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Ivan. 
I'm very uh, happy. You know. We love to hear from you. Email us at info at olimfever.com or leave us a voicemail at 530-763-3837. That's 530-70-FEVER. You can also interact with us on social. We're Olim Fever on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks again for listening, and until next time, keep the flame alive. Well, you're in the spirit.